Well, I've now completed the build. Now, unfortunately, what I would like to have done is to show you the build of the whole case, but um, I had to spend an awful lot of time searching the internet to try, to try and find how to put this thing together, because, again, no instructions, therefore it was a complete nightmare to work out exactly what to do with it. But I got there in the end, um, so what I'm going to try and do is show you the complete construction, um, or at least how I've put it together, because there are slightly different ways people have done it um, when mounting the, uh, the weight sensor. So let's first of all turn it over. And uh, you can see it's working. Let's, let's unplug it. Incidentally, that is a USB uh, port uh, that I've got this plugged into, so it operates on 5 volts quite happily. Um, we look underneath, you can see we've got here a block with two holes in it, and they act, well, that block acts as a riser to bring the sensor above the bottom plate. So a couple of screws in there, and then this is a, a long screw, um, in fact one of these, there's, there's loads of hardware left, tons of hardware, um, and so that just goes straight through there, uh, screw it in, it's threaded, and then at the top, this is where I wasn't sure what I was doing, um, but you can see what I've done is the bolt has gone has been threaded right through the sensor i've locked it down with a nut and then i've used another nut to basically adjust height because um well it's it's sandwiching this other block um let's just get a better view there you can see there so there's a couple of nuts there that i've used just to to uh i've got two nuts there and that is just a help regulate the height up and down um, so the block this plastic block here um, which is bringing the weight or weighing plate if you like away from the top surface needs to be itself above the top surface otherwise it'll hit it and I, I assume that's not a good idea so that's that's the basic construction so it's just a case of bolting it down with various nuts to get the right height and you're good to go. Um, the rest of it is all pretty straightforward and I've just noticed that I uh, I haven't uh, put a nut and bolt in there. I'll put one in in a minute, I'll show you so, so you can see how it goes and I haven't done that one there either. How sloppy. Anyway, um, the display and the PCB they really, sh you see you've got a brass riser, I put in a brass riser there, perhaps I'll show it better this side, screw at the top, screw at the bottom, um, it's one like this, so that's the riser, you can see it's threaded, um, and I've just got a one in there, because to be brutally honest, the plug at the back holds it in fine, and I couldn't really be bothered to fiddle and fart about with it too much. And then to hold the main board in, I've just put in a screw and a nut and threaded it through. I don't know if we can see that. Come, you can just see the nut coming through. So I can get some better light on it, perhaps. Bring the focus in a bit. There you go. You can see the nut. It's just, uh, and there's a bolt there as well. And the reason I put a nut. As I can say, it's the reason I put a nut just there is to raise the board off the plastic base a little bit. And that lined up quite neatly with the holes in the front plate. Um, what else? The rest of it's all fairly straightforward. That hole there is where that rocker switch should go, which I've not used. I've used this little switch here instead. But I just leave it permanently switched on because because it needs an external supply. It's not battery powered or anything. All you do is just plug it straight in and it comes on. So you've got to do that anyway. So I didn't bother with the rocker switch. Unless, of course, you want to leave it plugged in permanently. But to be brutally honest, I don't think most people will. And as I say, I um, a, better, a better use for the uh, rocker switch, I think. 
Um, I've missed quite a few of these screws, haven't I? Let's put one in any rate, just to show you how it works. It's uh, a little fiddly, as the whole kit is fiddly. Um, but basically, just take one of the screws and one of the nuts, like that. And then carefully try and hold the nut in like that. Trouble is, you drop it inside the case, you're in trouble. You'd have to take one of the plates off to get it out. Just, well, it's a real problem, but you just don't want it rattling around in there. Let's see if I can use the right screwdriver for starters, which I don't seem to have to hand. Let's just use this one for now. That's going to drop in there, isn't it? Trouble is, I can't do this very well. The case in the way, uh, the camera in the way. I don't even know if you can see anything. You're probably out of focus as well. Yeah, I haven't done that one very well, but you get the idea. And uh, it grabs it like that. I'll do the other ones separately. Now, in terms of whether having done all of this, is it any good? Um, well, it's a bit flaky, is the answer. Um, and there you go, it's reading 370 grams. So let's press the reset button, which is the one on the far right. And hopefully that will bring it back to zero, which it has done. Now, the thing that I noticed that people were having to calibrate it because you've got these up-down buttons here. I can't even remember what this one is. I think that, yeah, that zero eyes it. So that zero eyes is it on the far left. Um, and then these two middle buttons, they adjust the weight. So you need a reference weight. So courtesy of Minnie Mouse and my missus, I have a set of accurate scales. So let's try and get the light off that a little bit. And um, let's weigh something. What are we going to use? Um, I know. My favourite tool, this wonderful, wonderful t uh, tool this is. I've had it for many, many, many years. So I'll probably do a video on it. Why not? I like it. People make videos about things they like. Right, so let's first of all reset these scales. Get these. Why isn't that going to zero? There's something to... Oh, it might be because that was touching it. There we go. So that's zero. And that's coming in at 246 grams. So let's see what this does. And that's coming in 261 grams. Now, if you look at the display there, it's four digits. So I'm guessing that's 261.321 grams. 261 grams. Um, so it's a bit out. So if I can bring this over a bit, let's see if we can get them both in shot. Um, let's reset this one. There we go. And reset this one. And weigh this again. 247 grams. Pop it on here. Right, so it's too high, so we use these up-down buttons. And incidentally, I have got no idea what that number is doing. So if you know, please leave a comment. But I don't know what that's doing at all. But these up-down buttons will give us some adjustments. So we know what the reference is. That's going up, so let's go down until we get more, or we can get closer to 240. Uh, and more 245. Uh, if I go up one again, that's probably about as accurate as we're going to get. So let's take that off. Let's zero wise it again. Put it back on here 248, 249. I mean, these scales aren't perfect, none of them are. Let's try this again and see if it's any good. And there we go. 
So that's kind of calibrated to the correct weight. So it's fairly accurate. It's not bad. The, the trick will be, you know, will it actually keep um, that that setting? So well, let's try. Let's remove the power. Um, there's no big capacitors. Oh, there are some capacitors on there. So uh, probably won't have fully discharged, but never mind. So let's zeroize it. Try that again. Seems to be f dancing about a bit. Okay. And let's wear it again. So yeah, there you go. So in terms of accuracy, it's not too bad. 248, put it on this one, 245, a few grams here or there. That's no great, great shakes. So they do work. Um, I just don't feel that they're necessarily reliable. Um, I don't know why, but, you know, that's unfortunately one of the problems with some of these kits. You know, they're great to make, but whether they are accurate enough is debatable I suppose but there we go we've completed it we've got it working this whole project though was um, not particularly enjoyable because there weren't any instructions I like to get a kit and I like to be able to you know to make it and in order to do that you have to have the instructions what I don't want is a puzzle um, I don't like puzzles not into puzzles um, I'm quite happy building, constructing something with proper instructions on what to do. Um, a lot of it I could do myself without instructions, but it's it's things that I've never come across before, like this weight sensor, no idea about how that works, and had no idea how it was mounted. Um, the case wasn't too difficult to work out, that was fairly straightforward. But it's just things like that. The wiring between the sensor and this board which coloured wire goes where. I didn't know that. There was no instructions. I probably should have taken a closer look at the um, circuit diagram because that probably would have told me, to be brutally honest. Um, and then there's things like you've got this switch and you've got the rocker switch, so why have you got this switch? It's nice to have the extra, but I'd soldered that one in before I realised because I thought, well, for some reason they've got a master switch there and then a a normal on off switch there for some reason but they haven't that that's it. it you know they both utilize that and you just use one or the other well why I don't know um, love the display really nice display um, the case as always clear acrylic which you know it's nice to have these cases for the simple reason it's good to see your work and what you've done I did notice here that this board is right up against this, the sensor, um, and I did wonder whether that's going to be an issue because I just don't know what's going on with the the sensor. I'm assuming that it's recognising micro movement uh, of such tiny proportions um, that perhaps it doesn't matter, but perhaps it does matter. I don't know. That board is not really putting any pressure on there but if it's that sensitive perhaps it screws up a bit I don't know um, but there we go uh, another good look around the construction of it as I say when you um, build yours hopefully you won't need to worry about the lack of instructions because you can have a look at this video um, as I say I've got to put the rest of the screws in that, that was sloppy um, but yeah um, this port, incidentally, I think is for programming it, because when you do download the instructions, not that they are instructions, it comes with a lot of data files, um, which I suspect are to do with programming this, and for those, possibly with the Duinos, um, I don't know, um, I've no idea. It might be that you can plug it into this, uh, into another machine, and use this uh, with, with, with the other machine using the um, weight calibration or uh, you know weigh, weighing ability of this particular device for the purposes of, of another one so there we go that's it it's um 
not a bad little kit, ruined by the lack of instructions in my view. Uh, right, well, okay. Um, promise I will do a bit of a video on this. I'm sure other people have done videos on these dirty great Victor Hynox um, uh, knives. They are absolutely fantastic. I've had this for yonks. Um, and uh, I use it every week. There is a job that needs doing that that can satisfy. Anyway, it's not about that. It's about this beastie. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I have got some other kits kicking about, which hopefully I'll get around to. Try not to leave such a big gap this time. Um, but there are things going on in life that you have to deal with that unfortunately takes some... Um, takes up your fun time doesn't it any rate there you go any rate hope you enjoyed all of this and um we'll catch you on the next one cheers for now